Corporate finance practice problem using OneNote. Acquisition and tax carryover spread over multiple years. Get ready. It's time to take our chance with corporate finance. Here we are in OneNote. If you have access to OneNote, would like to follow along. You're not required to, but if would like to, we're in the icon on the left-hand side, the practice problems tab down in the 2012 acquisition and tax carryover spread over multiple years tab. Also note when using OneNote, look at the immersive reader tool. Our presentations will also be in the text area, same name, same number, but with transcripts, transcripts that can be translated into multiple different languages and either listened to or read in them. Closing the icon, we have our information up top, calculations in the blue on the right and on down below. We're looking at an acquisition type of situation. One company thinking about acquiring another company. The company being acquired has a loss carryover related to taxes of 700000 which could be beneficial if the acquiring company can basically take advantage of that loss because they could get a tax benefit for it. Typically, idea being that if there is a loss, then you have to oftentimes kind of match it up against income in order to get the tax benefit related to it. So if they have the loss, then they would have to basically match it up to the income going forward. We're going to assume the income going forward is going to be for years one, 310,000, year two, 360,000, year three, 470,000, and the carryover from the loss is 700,000. Therefore, we're going to get the benefit from it but you would think we'll have to allocate it over the over the three-year period until we consume up or match up the loss to the related income. If we're thinking about this in terms of a long-term purchase decision, then we might have to take into consideration the time value money impact of the fact that the loss isn't going to be all taken in the first year, get the tax benefit from it. Then we might have to spread it out over, in this case, possibly three years to match up against the income that we have uh, going forward. So once again, the company being acquired has the $700,000 lost. We need to match that up in order to get the tax advantage to some. the income generally would be the general idea. And then we're going to match that up. And then we have the tax rate at the 30%. So in total, we would expect then the carryover to be the 700000 If we're in a 30% tax bracket, the 700000 times 30% would mean that we would get 210000 of a tax benefit which can be a substantial tax benefit if we can get access to that in like the acquisition type of process. But once again, we can't take that 210 in year one unless we can match up that carryover to our related income, which we might be able to do depending on our circumstances. But in this case, we don't have the income to do that. We got we to gotta allocate it and hopefully carry over the loss until we can match it up against the income. So we're going to get that 210, we would expect, but not in the first year. So we're going to have to break this out. We're going to have our tables for years one, two, and three, and think about how we're going to allocate that uh, that benefit, the tax benefit. So for year one, we're going to say the income is 310000 So we got the 310000 income. We're going to match up the loss, not the two hundred and ten. That's the total tax benefit we expect to get. We're matching it up to the income so that we'd have to pay taxes on the income because it's we're talking about an income tax. So if we had 310 of income, we'd have to pay 30% tax on it. But if we get access to this loss of the 700,000, we can match up to 700,000. So we're taking the lesser of these two numbers in essence, cutting it at the 310. The difference between the 310 and the 700, something that we can then roll forward until the next period, hopefully so that we can take it in the following period, that would be the 390,000. So then we're gonna say the taxable income then is zero, which is great. So the tax rate or, or the tax then would be zero because we have no taxable income times 30%. And so the net, uh, the net income would be zero and the tax carryover. So now once we've calculated the impact of the loss carryover, then we're gonna add the carryover back to get back back to basically our income kind of like on a book basis or the cash flow income that might be then available to issue out to stockholders if we so choose. So in other words, our taxable income is at zero because we're not paying taxes given the fact we can take advantage of that loss, but we do have cash on a kind of a book basis or a cash basis that we could distribute out for dividends because that loss is basically a something that's gonna be a tax related component. So then in year two, I also note that when we do this calculation for this taxable income, 
when we do this problem in Excel, you could do you can imagine doing an if then formula. So saying like if this cell was um, if this if this number is less than the seven hundred thousand, pick up this number. If not, you know, pick up the seven hundred thousand or something like that. So it's a good little practice on the if then formula. So if you want to work this in Excel, you can do that. Also note with any of these kind of problems, it's useful to kind of build your table out. So you might want to do it in Excel or even by hand just to practice kind of building your tables and being able to visualize tables, you know, in your mind and construct them. So in year two, we got the 360,000. We then have the, the 360 that we're going to take because as we saw, we had 390 left of the 700,000 carryover. That amount is more than the income in year two, which is only 360,000. Therefore, we, we're only going to take the 360,000. And now if we take 390 minus the 360,000, we have 30,000 left. Or in other words, if I took my original 700,000, 700,000 minus the 310,000 we consumed in year one minus the 360,000 in year two, we got 30,000 left in year three to be taking against any income in year three. Once again, taxable income is zero in year two, no tax because there's no taxable income. So, so the net tax income is zero. The carryover, then we add back because it's just a tax related thing. It's not really a, a loss that happened in that year and year two. And therefore we would have kind of book earnings or cash flow that we could possibly give out to, uh, to, the, um, to the owners in the form of dividends if we so choose. In year three, we had 416. So 416, we're assuming. Uh, so now we can take that 30,000, which is the last component that'll eat up all of the loss, which was 700,000. So we got the 416 minus the 30,000 gives us the 386,000. The tax then, let's do the calculations on the good old calculator. I got something to do with the calculator. 416000 minus the 30,000 is going to give us the 386,000 times the 0.3 or 30% for the tax rate gives us the 115,800. So the, the basically net income after the taxes on like a tax basis because we took the loss carryover would be the 386,000 uh, and that would be the 270,200. And then we're going to add back the carryback once again, because that took into consideration the loss. And we're going to add back the carryover. We added the carryover once again, or in other words, in order to calculate the tax on the taxable income. It's not really a book kind of thing. So we're going to add it back to get to the cash flow or on a book. Base. So then we will take the 270,200 plus the 30,000 to get to the 300,200. And then we got our totals over here, which are just adding up the taxable income over the three years, which was the 310,000 plus the 360,000 plus the 416,000, 1,086,000, adding up the tax carryover adds up to that 700,000, showing that we did indeed consume the 700,000 loss. We got the taxable income at the 386, the tax at the 1158, the net tax income at the 272 and then the carryover once again at that 700,000 we can add up that last line as either 270200 plus 700,000 gives us the 97200 or this way adding up the 31000 plus 36000 plus 300200 and that's going to give us our 97200 income after taxes for the three year time period.